I'm Laura McCabe, and I'm here to talk to you today about adding thread. Okay, so here's the deal. There are lots of different ways to add thread, lots of different opinions about how you should, and really none of them are incorrect. It's just a matter of what you're trying to do with your beads and with your work, um, depending on how you're working and what threads you're working with. So I thought what I would do today is just demonstrate for you how I do my own add-ons. I get a lot of questions about it, so and I have a very particular way that I do it, which I have done for years and years and always been happy with it. So I'm gonna share that with you today. Okay, so let's get down to business and talk about adding thread. Like I mentioned, there's loads of different ways to add thread. This is just the way that's always worked for me. Um, I work with Fireline pretty much all the time, so that's what I'm going to be using here right now. Um, you can see this little piece of it's a section of herringbone that I have here. Um, I'm going to be adding a new thread to this and what I've done is I've, I've chosen white for my new thread. Obviously I would be adding on the darker color if I were doing this but I thought that way you could kind of see which one's the new thread and which one's the old thread. So if you have a look here the white one is my new thread that's going to be going on and this darker one is the one that I want to get rid of. So um, work until you have whatever kind of length you're comfortable with as far as weaving off. Um, this is probably a bit, bit longer than I need. As long as I have about five or six inches, I'd be okay. But what we're going to do is we are going to take this new thread and we're going to hold it right next to the old thread. And what I'm going to do is holding the two together, I'm going to do an overhand knot and pull the two tails through. And you can just tighten that up right up there, you can see there's there's my knot up here. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna separate the two tails, and I'm just gonna pull this down like that, and I will hold these two tails aside, and I'm just gonna resume my stitching. I'll do a few more rows, and then once I've done a few rows, I will just weave off these two tail threads here. Um, in herringbone, what I will do is I'll go sort of up a column, down a column, you know, and change directions a couple of times to bury it, and then I'll just cut the thread. You don't need to knot any more than this initial knot that you're doing when you're tying it on. So this type of add-on can also be done with nylon thread, but there's a bit of a trick to it because what you'll find is when you use a nylon thread, if you go to tie it and then you tighten it up high like I did with the fire line right there, then it will just seize up on you and it won't pull down to the base where the beadwork is. So I've got a little piece of nylon thread here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you with that the difference. So what you're going to do is, again, you'll hold your old thread and your new thread together. Just going to do an overhand knot like that. But rather than pulling it tight and then pulling the tails to pull it down, I'm going to use a little awl. This is almost like if you've done any purl knotting. It's the same technique where you're going to tighten up the knot and just pull it down to the base with that all so that when you go and you do the final like snug up it's right down at the base there so it doesn't seize up higher up on here and then leave you unable to uh, to pull the threads down so that's the only difference you can certainly do it with nylon thread as well um, it works fine with that so let me go back to my fire line okay so here we are back with the fire line so to show you we're just going to resume our stitching that I've been doing here. I've been doing a herringbone with a moving bead to kind of get the spiral pattern in it. But you're just going to start stitching again and that knot will kind of vanish in there for you. I'm going to do another herringbone stitch. So you just continue on like this. So whatever stitch you're working in, maybe you're doing peyote stitch or something like that, you can um, you can just, same, same approach, and again you would just want to bury the tails once you've done a, at least a few rows of stitching. So I use this type of add-on for all of my beadwork for all of the different stitches. Um, it works very well for me. There's a couple advantages that I can tell you. Um, one is it's quick, obviously you see it's a quick add-on, it doesn't take a lot of time, and you don't have to half hitch on and off a bunch, which again leaves 
leaves knots in your beads, which can be a problem. Um, if you are doing something like this, this is a flat peyote band. You can see that I've built, and then it's my cherry blossom bracelet, so I've put some cherry blossoms on after the fact. Now with something like this, obviously I would have to add thread because there's a lot of peyote stitch here that has to be done, so I did add thread. And while I'm working, what I will do is rather than add the thread and then bury the tails, I'll leave the tails just hanging out like they are here. You can see I haven't buried the ones in this herringbone yet, so I'll just leave these tails attached and when I get to the point where, you know, I'm adding the flowers, if it's an area where there actually is a knot, like I have here, because there's a thread add-on, if I get to the point where I'm trying to pass through that bead where the knot is, and I can't seem to get through it, which does happen if you're doing embellishments over beaded surfaces, what you can do, if you haven't buried it, you can take those two tails and you can put a little bit of tension on them, pull them up, that will pop your you're not out of your beads for a second so that you can actually pass through that bead that's being problematic. And then when you let it go, you can tighten it up a bit and that knot will go back into place. So I will often do that when I'm doing something like this, and then I'll weave in the tail threads at the very end once I've embellished over that area. So it's good for that kind of thing as well. So that's how I add thread. Like I said, there's a bunch of different ways to do it, but this is the one that I've found works really well. I have not had issues um, with any of my work pulling apart. As long as that, that thread is buried well after you've done the knot and you've changed directions a couple of times, you can kind of do the X pattern in the peyote stitch or the up and down in the herringbone. Um, as long as you do that, you'll be fine. You won't have any problems with it loosening or coming undone. Thanks for joining me for this brief tutorial on adding thread. Be well, stay safe, and beat on.